and welcome to Salem Covenant's online worship service. Please stay connected with us throughout the week online at SalemCovenant.org or download the Church Center app. We truly pray that you have a blessed worship experience this morning, and the staff cannot wait to see you all back in our sanctuary. And we want you to know that we love you and miss you. Good morning, church. Welcome back to another online service, and happy Mother's Day. If you're new to our online service, we're so glad to have you with us. In just a few minutes, we'll sing a few songs, and then we'll continue our study in Acts. Come pray with us on Wednesday, May 13th at 2 p.m. in the parking lot across the street from St. Anne's residence. We will meet in the parking lot of St. Mary's Star of the Sea Church, located on East 3rd Street, but you'll have to access it from East 3rd Avenue or East 4th on the alley. Liz Johnson, daughter of Jim and Peg Johnson, is an RN there, and it has been a very difficult few months. She appreciates your prayers and donations and says that any snacks or bottled water would be appreciated by all of the staff and volunteers. The facility has apartments for independent living and assisted living services as needed. Therefore, they are not staffed for the current situation. They need prayer for strength, encouragement, wisdom, protection, and additional staff to be hired. If you cannot join in person on the 13th, please pray anytime at home. Call Peg if you have any questions at 218-260-6501. Before we worship, we have a quick update video from the Azazas in Colombia. Please enjoy. Hello from Colombia, friends, um, where we continue to be in quarantine uh, since the middle of March, um, but our family is well and healthy and we're home and just want to share um, how we've been serving in this time and how ministry continues. Thank you to technology. We have been able to serve in different ministries from our home. Uh, we have been working with a group from a local church, a theology group, and so I've been meeting with them once a week to talk about a little bit about theology, but a little bit about how they can serve their communities. And also uh, the group of CEPAS, the youth group in El Bagre, have been able to uh, meet with them by, by Zoom and talk about how they can also serve there and how God is working in their lives during this time. And also uh, theological education, we, we had a group of 20 uh, about 100 students who wanted to study this year, but because of what's going on, we have right now only 35 students who are doing online classes. And thanks God, I've been able to spend time with them and start, I start this Monday uh, Old Testament certificate with them. And that's been good, thanks to God. It's a lot of work, but it's, it's going very well. Um, we continue to encourage youth leaders uh, as we meet online and phone calls, working on different resources for them and for children's ministry leaders. Um, one of the things we've most been inspired by is how people in the local church and the national church continue to serve and look out for the needs of each other and their communities. Um, so thanks to a grant um, from the Evangelical Covenant Church that came through Serve Globally, uh, ministries, for example, like Fusba and Barranquilla uh, were able to hand out groceries um, to people who are in need, particularly uh, Venezuelan immigrants. We also received pictures from El Bagre from the CEPAS program as they uh, did a donations drive and were able to go out into the community and, and give food to those in need. And here in Medellin, we've heard of local churches, Hands with Hope Ministry, who's also um, working in the communities that they're in to distribute food to those most in need. That's the biggest need right now. So again, we've been encouraged by what we're seeing and how ministry continues forward in this time. We would like to thank you for your support, for your praise, and for your financial support, and allow us to be the church in this time. And uh, I believe that this is the time where the church has to be the church. So thank you so much, and God bless you. Good morning, church, and happy Mother's Day. I hope you got spoiled with a wonderful breakfast in bed 
or maybe it will be uh, lunch after our service. And um, I want to just encourage you, celebrate your mom well today, or maybe it's your spiritual mother. Maybe there's somebody that has really invested in you spiritually. Um, I want to just encourage you, pick up the phone today, give them a call, celebrate them well. And that's our prayer uh, this morning that uh, you will be celebrated well. Hey, follow me, follow me to the sanctuary. Let me show you our beautiful sanctuary. I hope you're ready for some worship. It's going to be a great morning. Good morning, Salem Covenant. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back this morning. We are so happy to be with you and to worship together with you. We are excited to lift up the name of Jesus. Why don't you gather the family, get your Bibles ready. We are going to praise God. Temptation comes my way 
are good and are bad and the highs and lows um, in times when we have no idea what's going to happen around the bend. Um, and I just thank you that you are always here, that you are our firm rock. Thank you.
I want to remind you this morning of the great gift we have in God's Word. And I hope you will get excited with me as we study God's Word in Acts chapter 12. Um, I was thinking about the comparison that we read about God's Word and honey. And uh, took a quick bite this morning of this honey and man, it is sweet, but it is good. Um, it is not like medicine that you have to force down. Psalm 119 says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Ezekiel chapter 3, And he said to me, Son of man, eat whatever you find here. Eat the scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly with the scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. And then I ate it and it was in my mouth as sweet as honey. Psalm 19, the decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. Jeremiah said, your words were found and I ate them and your words was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. May God's word bring a rejoicing to your heart this morning. And I pray that as a congregation, that we may fall in love with God's word again. Uh, may his word bless you this morning and really speak to your heart. Let me pray for us. Father, I pray for our congregation. I pray that you will bless every person watching this um, sermon this morning. Um, in front of their TV or in front of the computer. I pray that your spirit will draw near to them, that you will encourage them. I lift up every mother this morning um, that's watching. I pray that you will bless them, that you will renew their spirit. Lord, uh, may they have such a profound sense on uh, your incredible love for them. And Father, I pray, especially for us this morning, that um, you will help us to fall in love with your word. I pray that it will be fresh, um, that it will challenge us this morning, and it will become revelation to us, that it will impact our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we read Acts chapter 12, I want to encourage you to just read through Acts 10 and 11 again to just kind of give you full context um, of where we are at in this book. So let's read Acts chapter 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up. Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him, and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now, I know for certain 
that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. Peter is outside. You are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. It is his angel. Now Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. Go, tell these things to James and to the brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Then, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. But when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. But they came to him with one accord, and having made Blastus, the king's personal aide, their friend, they asked for peace, because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, The voice of a god and not of a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So let's highlight several things out of this passage. In verse 1, we read about King Herod Agrippa I. Later on, we will read about King Herod Agrippa II. Um, they're all part of the same family dynasty. Uh, and this is not the same King Herod that we read about in the four Gospels. That's actually King Herod the Great. Don't let his name fool you because he wasn't great. He was actually just known as King Herod the Great because of his great building skills. He did build some fascinating structures. You can still see um, some of those structures today when you visit the Holy Land, like the Herodium. Um, but we know that he was a, a terrible king. He's the same king that... Uh, um, spoke to the Magi and that wanted to kill Jesus and then did end up killing so many uh, babies uh, during the, the birth of Jesus. And so now in verse 2, he kills James. And this is the first time that we read about the death of an apostle. Um, and when we think about this moment, we actually have to go back to the Gospels in Mark chapter 10, verse 35, to kind of just ponder uh, a conversation that happened between James and John and Jesus. So let's look at that conversation. So let's read uh, Mark 10, verses 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. We kind of have to smile about that line. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other uh, at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink this cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink 
the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. And now we see in Acts chapter 12, in a sense, these words of Jesus coming into fulfillment and James is drinking um, from that same cup. So it is now after the death of James and because of the approval of the Jewish people that King Herod goes after Peter as well. And so Peter finds himself in prison during the festival of unleavened bread. He's got to wait for this festival to be done. Um, he cannot be trialed during this festival. That's against Jewish custom. So it makes you think a little bit about Jesus as well, um, being arrested um, during uh, the Passover um, festival. Um, but obviously we know that that was necessary because Jesus, because Jesus needed to become the ultimate Passover lamb for us. So in verse 5, we see that the church is earnestly praying for Peter. They want to see God doing a miracle. Um, and what a great challenge to us as the church that we need to be praying as well. There's so many things right now that we can pray for. And so prayer needs to become part of our daily um, devotions. And even in uh, 1 John uh, chapter 5 it says, devote yourself to prayer, uh, being watchful and thankful. Ephesians 6, 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And so even if you're maybe new in the faith and new to this whole um, online church thing, and you wonder, why do Christians pray? Well, um, we pray because we believe that prayer works. Um, we pray because we believe that it changes things, and we pray um, because it makes things happen. And so prayer is such an important part of every believer's life and I want to encourage you learn how to pray make it part of your daily walk um, with God so let's look what happens after all this prayer uh, in verse 6, and actually very exciting several verses here. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Let me just pause there. Peter is sleeping again. This is actually not new for Peter. We, we see him throughout the Gospels kind of sleeping. But what is unique here is um, he's sleeping on the night before his trial. It's a trial that might actually cost him his life. So it's life and death. And not just that, he is sleeping between two soldiers that is chained to him. So he's not sleeping on a, on a, a sleep number. This is uncomfortable sleep, but yet he is sleeping. And I believe it's because Peter... Um, is really resting in the promises of God. He knows that God is in control of his life. I believe he's holding on to some promises of uh, things that Jesus shared with him earlier uh, in the Gospels. You will have to go and read it. And so I really think that this is important because there's so many things that in life that wants to steal our peace it will steal our sleep. I know that um, it is true for me that sometimes um, stress and worries about tomorrow can really um, steal our rest. And we have to learn how to rest in God's rest um, and knowing that He is 
in control. He's in control of every aspect of our lives. And I think when we have that awareness and when we really rely on the promises of God, when we, we trust that He is in control of every aspect, we will sleep better um, and we won't worry so much. And so let me encourage you again in this verse, rest in the promises of God. God truly cares for your life. You are special to Him. Let's continue verse 7. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Man, he's in a deep sleep. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It, it opened for them by itself. And they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. And then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. Verse 12. When this dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. So Peter is going back now to the church um, that was praying for him that we read about in verse 5. Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was overjoyed. She ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, she said, it must be his angel. <laughs> so Peter knocks on the door. A servant girl comes out. She can't believe that it's P Peter. She runs back. Tells everyone, hey, Peter is at the door. And uh, they say, hey, you're crazy. You're nuts thinking that that's Peter. It's easier for them to believe that it's Peter's angel than actually uh, than actual Peter. Now, let's just pause here for a second. Because I think it reveals a little bit about their faith. Um, and about their prayer life. We know that they've been praying. But it seems like they honestly did not believe that God was moving on their behalf. So as your pastor this morning, I just want to encourage you and actually I want to encourage myself as well. That there needs to be a level of faith every time we pray. It cannot be just a pie in the sky. And so when we pray, we need to have an expectation that God is moving, ministering, working on our behalf. Uh, God loves to be in partnership with His people. Something happens when we pray. Our prayer is not in vain. Of course, we have to um, wait on God's timing and on God's sovereignty. But when we pray, Let's pray with an expectation and let's pray with faith. Verse 16, But Peter kept on knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. 
Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said, and then he left for another place. Verse 18, in the morning there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. Can you imagine their confusion? Here you got four, six soldiers that were chained to Peter and it's like, what happened? <laughs> Luke does such a great job saying, hey, there was no small commotion. It was chaos. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined his guards and ordered that they be executed. Let's jump to verse 21. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a God, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. So, what a sad ending to Herod's life. Um, as we look at this passage, people are praising him as a God, in a sense, he's taking God's honor. And God is not allowing any of that. And he is struck down by an angel. And he was eaten by worms and died. What a great reminder that God is God and we are not. God is not going to share his honor. And so I want us to just take a moment to just pray um, and to give thanks to God for his goodness in our lives and his favor upon our lives. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this passage. Thank you for the, the lessons that we can learn out of this, this story in Acts chapter 12. And Lord, we just want to take pause this morning and to once again, to just give you all the honor. Lord, it is not about us. It's not about us, Lord. We just give you all the honor this morning. We want to crown you as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Thank you for your goodness, for your presence, for your grace. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. May you receive all of the praise this morning. Even where you are sitting this morning, in front of the TV. Let me just give you a couple of minutes just to give God all the praises for His goodness and His faithfulness in your life. Amen.
He is for you. 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 He is for you.